In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the multiprocessing module. Specifically, we're going to be wrapping up the introduction that we covered in the previous video. And all we're going to be doing here is we're just going to be instantiating some number of processes, let's say 50 processes separately, and we're going to see that when we do that, if we open up the task manager utility on our operating system, I'm on Linux, so that's HTOP. If you're on Windows, that's just task manager. If you open up that utility, after you run the code that we're going to be running in this video, you can see that each of the processes that we instantiate using this module are going to be shown or displayed in the task manager utility. So what we're going to do is modify the code from our previous video so that we can actually see each of these tasks separately. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the numbers list from just five numbers to a bigger list. And again, the reason for doing this is because as we instantiate each of these processes, Python is going to basically run this code too quickly and we're not going to see the result if we don't make this uh, deliberately run a little bit slower. So on top of making the list a little bit bigger, I'm also deliberately going to be adding in a delay after each print statement. And I'm also going to be changing the uh, orientation of the function. So specifically, the function right now, the square function, takes in a single number and prints the result. What I want to do instead is every process I spawn, I want the function to take a list of numbers, and then in, in the function, I want to loop over each of the numbers and then call a sleep function, which is going to deliberately delay so we can actually see the output and see the output in our task manager as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the square function in that way. And in order to add the delay, I'm just going to import time. So time is a module that if you have Python installed, it comes with it. So you don't need to install any third party um, module for this. It should just already come standard with your installation of Python. So in the square function, I'm going to change this from number to numbers again, because we'll be taking a list of numbers. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take this print statement here. I'm going to move it up over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, put this into a loop. So I'm going to say for number in numbers. And what I want to do is the following. I'm going to get rid of all of this code, which is just responsible for printing out the process ID. We don't really care about that in this video. I'm going to uh, also add in a delay. So after each print statement, or let's say before each print statement, I'm going to say time.sleep, and I'll give it a certain time to wait for, in this case, 0 0.5 seconds. It'll calculate the result and that it'll print the, um, it'll print the result out to the screen. So what we need to do in the main function is we need to modify it a little bit so that way we pass in the appropriate arguments to our square function now. So instead of looping all of the numbers in the numbers list that we're given, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop that loops over all of the processes that we want to instantiate. So I'm going to say for i in range, and then I'm just going to say, let's say 50. And this is the arbitrary number of processes that I want to instantiate for each call to the square function. So this part of the code is more or less fine. We're creating a process object. We're saying that the target function is square, and then we need to make sure that we change the argument from number to numbers, because again, we're passing in a list this time. Pro we're appending on the process to our processes list, and then we're going to start each of the processes. Now, after all of this is, has occurred, I'm just going to print out a message which says multiprocessing complete, and then uh, that'll be the end of the program. Now. What I want to also do, which I didn't mention in the previous video, is make use of the dot join method, which is available to process objects. And essentially what this will allow us to do is wait for all of the processes that we started to be completed before we run any subsequent code. So before we actually print out the statement, we're going to want to make sure that all of the processes that we started have successfully completed. So in order for us to do that, we're going to use the join method. So we're going to loop through all of the processes in our list. So we're going to say for process in processes, call the join method on each of the processes. So just like we did dot start, what we're doing here is we're looping over the processes and we're saying go ahead and start up or join them together. So that's all we're doing there. And then we'll print out our message to indicate to the user that the code has completed running. So I think this is pretty much all we need for this. Uh, hopefully we'll write this and we'll clear the terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up a separate terminal. And I'm going to make this uh, a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do this so that way we have kind of the uh, terminal side by side so we can kind of see what's going on here. 
I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to run HTOP. So HTOP is the task manager utility. So again, if you're on Windows, go ahead and pop open your task manager. And what I'm going to do in HTOP, you can filter the tasks by name. So I'm going to press F4 and type in Python. So you'll notice that when I do that, let me just make this a little bit smaller as well. You can notice that when I do that, the Python tasks, none of which are any of the Python code that we're writing here, are showing up here. So these are all the tasks that are currently running on my machine that happen to have something to do with Python. Python, that have Python in the name of the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this code and then for every process that we instantiate in this loop, we're going to see a separate process be uh, represented here in the HTOP manager. And we're going to just kind of see that it indeed does instantiate separate processes and that they're represented in the operating system utility. So let's go ahead and run this. So we'll say Python multiprocessing introduction two. And let's see, so I think I probably just misspelled something. So let's see. So I didn't define the processes list it looks like, so I need to define that of course. So processes is an empty list. Write that, run it. So now we see that each of these processes are being spawned. We see 50 new things to come up here. Each of them have their, if you recall from the first video, this number here corresponds to the ID that the operating system is assigning to each of these separate processes and they're treating each of these separate processes as we would expect from running them in the multiprocessing module. So if I go ahead and stop the execution of this program, if I just hit control C, you'll notice that all those processes go away. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to uh, cover in this video, just sort of a, uh, a, a bit of topics that I didn't have time to cover in the first part of the series. So in subsequent videos on multiprocessing, we're going to cover other topics that and other ideas that are present in the multiprocessing module. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments on this video or any of the other videos in the series, please leave them in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub, and you can find a link to that in the description. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.